What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode This is episode number 45 and we're starting today's episode off with some player training here Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Marco the Magician Ryan Taller and also Reed Avald are getting the five slots available right now Reed Avald, I'm going to grow him until he hits 80 and then probably leave him as he is As for Loftus-Cheek and Ryan Taller though, they'll continue to get training for the indefinite future Just because they're two really hot prospects in this Watford side I mean so is Reed Avald really too, but either way those two mainly are the, uh, the key young players we're trying to develop for the future and there you go still take on PSV Eindhoven for the first game of today's episode here at Vicarage Road as the Dutch side travel to Hertfordshire to take us on of course this is the Europa League round of 32 stage the first leg away in the Netherlands finished as a goalless draw so coming into this game we had to be wary of PSV's threat because if they score just one goal due to the away goal ruling we'll have to score twice so coming into this game had to be solid defensively but also went to open the scoring as well first chance fell to us but Marco Ryan Tyler's shot was blocked and turned behind for a corner and then in the 20 the 8th minute, Obi Olari really should have made it 1 0 there. Our giant striker went through, but sadly couldn't hit the target and the shot went wide of the post. In the 34th minute, all would have been forgiven for Charlie Austin's poor debut season for us had he scored that goal. What a fantastic goal that would have been! A first time bicycle kick going over the bar and behind for a goal, kicking it was still goalless. But at half time, as you saw the stats there, despite PSV having a little bit more possession, we were playing better. But in the second half, thankfully for me, Jack Butler bails us out in the 62nd minute. I tried to pass out from the back, gave the ball away, and PSV should have opened a scoring but Butler made a phenomenal save and kept it at 0-0 in the 85th minute PSV would also hit the woodwork as well this shot from just outside the area hitting the post and eventually we got the ball away had PSV scored there it would have been good night Watford there's no way we would have scored the two goals we need to in the final few minutes had they opened the scoring there thankfully the shot hit the woodwork though and we got the ball away Obvio Larry almost won us the game in the 89th minute that shot well saved by the goalkeeper in turn behind for a corner but from the corner Marco Ryan Taller crosses the ball in Corker heads it up in the air and at the far post with just five seconds of normal time to play. It's Etienne Capu who heads the ball in and our captain for the night makes it Watford 1 PSV Eindhoven 0. So no longer the record signing for Watford no longer a first 11 player but I've always liked using Etienne Capu. He's a really really decent midfielder in this Watford side. A very good defensive midfielder had a good game in this one and caps it up with the winning goal as well that will surely send us through to the Europa League round of 16 stage. So Corker heads it on. It's Capu at the far post who heads it in, he makes it Watford 1 PSV in the uh, PSV nil in the 90th minute and Etienne Capu sends us through to the Europa League round of 16 stage, so delighted with that, it was a really 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 tense and cagey game because although we had 9 shots and 4 of which on target I was understandably reluctant to really push too many bodies forward because of course if we did concede I wouldn't be able to see us grabbing two goals in the game we couldn't score away in the Netherlands even once so I didn't really fancy our chances of overcoming that deficit due to that away goal ruling so I had to make sure we were solid at the back we kept our clean sheet and most importantly Etienne Capu headed in the winner in the 90th minute and does send us through to the Europa League round of 16 stage so delighted with that the board wants to reach the final I don't know whether we'll be able to do that but we are through to the round of 16 stage and I'm very 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 pleased with that. Still following that, I decided to make a custom formation. Yes, I've created a custom formation for the first time with Watford. The problem throughout the series in 45 episodes has been the lack of goals. You guys have heard me complaining about it. You guys have been seeing how frustrating it is for me. We just don't score enough goals in this Watford side. We were playing a 4-3-3 holding uh, last season. That was okay. We then switched to a 4-2-3-1 for this season. Didn't work out completely. Then we changed to a 4-2-2-2. It started off well and then we faded away a little bit so I feel like we need to go really really adventurous so I decided to make a custom formation and look at this for a shape here we got four defenders two wing backs one defensive midfielder three attacking midfielders uh, well sort of uh, one attacking midfielder and two wingers if you will two wide attacking midfielders if you will and two strikers as well so that is a really 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 offensive formation if we don't score goals in this formation then I don't know what to say man seriously because that is as attacking and as attack minded as you can get really Really. with only two centre-backs left back at the uh, original sort of back four if you will the wing-backs playing as wing-backs obviously one defensive midfielder three attacking midfielders supporting two strikers that is very very offensive I can see us conceding quite a few goals in this formation losing our fantastic defensive record but hopefully touch wood we'll score a lot more goals because we need to you know seriously we just don't score enough goals in this team we need to try and amend that and hopefully with this new customer formation we will score more goals I've called 
called it the docks and uh, we'll wait and see if it turns out to be a successful formation for us or if we'll need to change it in just a few games time still we try out the formation for the first time in this game against West Ham United here the second and final one of today's episode coming on the back of that win against PSV we only had one day's rest coming into this game this game being played on a Saturday first chance fell to West Ham but Butler made a great save and then we had a great chance there that shot being well saved by the West Ham goalkeeper though and it was cleared away in the 21st minute though another great chance for West Ham and once again Jack Butler makes a really good save he's going to be very busy in this formation and he keeps it goalless and from that we broke got ourselves forward Loftus Cheek finds Redman who goes for goal and again it's a really good save by the goalkeeper and West Ham clear so a battle of the goalkeepers early on in this game but in the 26th minute Virgin Trejo wins the ball back for us here and finds Troy Deeney Deeney finds Redman back to Loftus Cheek great ball through by Ruben Loftus Cheek inside to Nathan Redman and it's a great finish by Redman as well who curls it into the top corner and makes it Watford 1 West Ham United 0 so Loftus Cheek with the assist he's playing in a more offensive role now in the attacking midfield position should get a few more goals and a few more assists as well he gets an assist here great ball inside there's Redmond quick little Ronaldo chop and Nathan Redmond who will sign the summer transfer window gets his second goal of the season and makes it Watford 1 West Ham 0 so 1-0 to the Hornets delighted to take the lead in this game in the 34th minute another good chance for West Ham Nikita Yelovic shot goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick and in the 38th minute another good chance for us here Loftus Cheek goes through down the left hand side here powers past James Tompkins crosses in the ball in with a drill cross it falls to Neom here who goes for goal but our right back shot goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick so still 1-0 as things stood but another good chance for West Ham in the 43rd minute we're going to see a lot of our opponents get a lot of chances against us now we chose this attack information but once again Jack Butler makes a superb save and keeps it at 1-0 so at half time as you could see it was a really open game 11 shots in total West Ham had had more possession but I felt as though we were still playing pretty well and in the second half just three minutes after the restart we would double our advantage Troy Deeney our captain gets his 10th goal of the season reaches double figures and makes it 2-0 to Watford and the goalkeeper for West Ham was actually playing quite well in this game but for this one I'm not really sure what he was doing very very poor goalkeeping don't know how he was beaten by Deeney there our skipper will certainly take it it's his 10th goal of the season in the Premier League but either way pretty poor goalkeeping and we were pretty fortunate to double our advantage there. In the 54th minute, Mark Noble shot goes just over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And in the 69th minute, here a good chance for Lanzini to get West Ham back in the game. They had so many opportunities, West Ham. Unsurprisingly so, with our attack mind information, we are going to see a lot of shots coming at our goal. Lanzini went pretty close there, dragging the shot just wide in the post and behind for a goal kick. But the one thing I like about this formation is it is set up for a good counter-attack as well. So many offensive players, wing backs too, and some good pacey wide men as well. And the stoppage time is West Ham pushed way too many bodies forward. Buffal found Traore. Traore saw Ryan Taller calling for it at the far post. Gave it to our young Italian winger. And Mark the Magician gets his second goal in the Premier League and makes it Watford 3, West Ham 0. So he comes off the bench. He secures the points. We're going to win with our first game with the new custom formation. Traore with the assist, being unselfish. Loftus Cheek getting out of the way. And Mark the Magician rifling it at the far post, coming off the bench and making it Watford 3, West Ham United 0. So delighted to get the three points. Delighted to win by three goals in it as well. Those are the type of games that we want to see more often in this series. Those are the type of games we want to see with this new formation as well. 14 shots and 7 of which on target. West Ham had 8 shots on to uh, on target on, uh, sorry, 8 shots in total in fairness and 2 on target as well. They definitely will be getting more chances, our opponents, now we switch this formation, but we should be seeing a lot more chances created by us and a lot more shots taken as well. Now we're going so attack minded because that's what we really needed to do, you know. Yes, of course, having a great defensive record is awesome, but in in terms of excitement and in terms of enjoyable gameplay, I want to make sure that I can provide that as well. And of course, now we change to, uh, to this attack mind information, we should see a lot more shots coming from us and hopefully, touch wood, a lot more goals as well. Regardless, 3-0 was the final score. Delighted with that win. Delighted to win with the first game with a new formation. And following that, we had some player training. Uh, Loftus to cheat now to a 75, I do believe. And also we'll look at the monthly scouting report, uh, sorry, a monthly scouting update for our Canadians and also our youth squad monthly report as well. And also a squad report as well to any episode and a look at the league table too as you can see with the squad right now it's looking pretty healthy some very nice attribute changes to a few players once again I will say I'm a little bit frustrated that some players just haven't grown despite their form and despite their game time and their morale too but it's just one of those things you know growth problems in FIFA even with the training feature this year it's always been a problem and it's just something which you know it, we're like we're all great we're all really pleased to uh, see the training feature being added this year to FIFA but it's still 
pretty annoying how some players just quite frankly will not grow regardless of what kind of form they're in and how happy they are. Either way, that is the squad report. You can see how the players are currently doing and also we'll look at the league table as well. Just 10 games remaining in the season. We are in third place. Seven points clear of Liverpool. Nine points clear of Newcastle, the last side to beat us in the Premier League. And also, only six points off Spurs who are top of the table. Don't see us claiming the title come the end of the season, but I guess you never know. But that does end the episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like because I was much appreciated. And of course, it really does help the channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.